This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSPTV and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. For your information, we speak with a local doctor about vaccinations for children and the measles. Hi everyone, I'm Ken Kerr and this is FYI on SSPTV. I hope your Tuesday is going well. Here's your headlines. The measles outbreak in the United States has now reached 17 states and Washington, D.C., and Pennsylvania is among those 17 states. The Centers for D Disease Control and Prevention report that 121 people are now included in the outbreak that began in Southern California Disney theme parks back in late December. Last year, the U.S. saw 644 cases, the greatest number since the measles was eliminated in 2000. We talked with a local pediatrician to find out if the disease has arrived in our area. The concern is theoretic. We have not had any uh, documented cases to my knowledge, and I hope we don't get any. Health officials across the country have attributed the resurgence to a growing number of people who have chosen not to vaccinate their children for personal reasons. And the discussion on whether or not to vaccinate is certainly a hot topic these days with strong opinions on both sides. I talked further with pediatrician Dr. Steve Glicken from the Lehigh Valley Hospital Hazleton. He feels strongly that all children should be vaccinated. Why is it so important to you and why, why do you feel so strongly in that direction that children should be vaccinated? We feel strongly about this on several levels. First, for the safety of the child. Immunizations have been one of the biggest forces for reduction of childhood mortality since the beginning of the 20th century. Um, secondly, for protection of the community at large. There are a lot of people out there either who are too young for certain immunizations, namely most infants below a year of age, and people who are immune suppressed because of things like cancer and medications that they may be on. So from the point of view of public health and individual health, it's extremely important. Some people on the other end say, you know, it's our right to decide what, what, what's good for our child, what's not good for our child. What do you try to maybe consult with parents or say to people who say that? Well, unfortunately, this has been studied pretty widely. And people who are dead set against immunizations in general, do not listen to reason and do not listen to scientific fact. Occasionally, it does work, and I try to convince people to go with a regular immunization program. Um, I think that it is an ill-advised decision. I think it is a wrong decision. One can argue that people certainly have a right to refuse immunizations for themselves, I do think it gets a lot stickier when you're talking about preschool and school-aged children. Like so, I mean. Well, because if a child is not immunized and we see something like has happened in border states with Mexico where there have been outbreaks of polio rarely and where we're now seeing in California and other states outbreaks of measles, this puts unimmunized children and immune suppressed children at terrible risk. With all this going on in the Hazleton area, I know maybe you can't get into specifics, but is it uh, uh, here as well? I mean, are par some parents saying, hey, we, we don't want this? There are some parents saying that they are refusing immunizations or that they want to have a special schedule of immunizations that, uh, you know, they have a variety of reasons, none of which make much sense to me. Um, we currently are asking such patients to leave our practice. And again, you have rights as doctors like they have rights as patients, you were telling me. Absolutely. We can't cut people off cold, but we can give them a limited amount of time to either change their opinion or if they maintain it, which I suppose is their right in Pennsylvania, they will have to find an alternate source of health care. Now, are there, and I don't know all the science behind it and what we can get into in the short amount of time, but are there some risks associated with vaccination, like anything in medicine or, or like anything in life? Really? The risks of vaccines are very, very small. Almost never are they life risks. The whole question of autism has been buried in the ground innumerable times, but it's sort of like a zombie that keeps crawling out of the ground. And it's an argument that people use, and it is simply dead wrong. How much politics should be involved with the medicine and, and, and then that aspect? Is, does it conflict a little bit here? Well, the Pennsylvania legislature many years ago gave parents an option 
of having a personal objection to immunizations and opting out because of that. Um, so yes, in Pennsylvania they have a legal right to do that, but that does not mean that we have to either encourage it or allow it in our practice. A cab driver was robbed at gunpoint as we move on, and this happened early this morning in Hazleton. It happened at 4.35 a.m. in the rear of 8th and Cybert Streets. According to police, two suspects wearing ski masks and brandishing handguns demanded money from a cab driver. After taking an undetermined amount of cash, they fled in a dark-colored Honda with New York registration. Anyone who may have witnessed the incident or who has any information is asked to call Hazleton Police at 570-459-4940. In other news here on FYI, a local author will be holding a book, a few book signings in downtown Hazleton this week. Dr. Edward T. Bednars III wrote the book entitled The Journey to Discovery, The Meaning of Life. He has made several appearances on the Sam LaSan Show and here on FYI. And now you can meet him in person and purchase his books. Dr. Bednars will hold a book signing and sale tomorrow from 4.30 until 6.30 p.m. at the Pines Eatery and Spirits in downtown Hazleton. Another sale and signing will take place at the Hazleton Area Public Library during second Friday, this Friday from 2.30 to 4.30 p.m. and a third signing and sale on Valentine's Day, Saturday from noon until 2 p.m. at the Library Express in the Steamtown Mall in Scranton. For more information, you can go to the website that is up on your screen. The monthly lupus support group meeting scheduled for tonight at 7 p.m. at the Bowl Arena in West Hazleton has been canceled. Meanwhile, a talk on autoimmune diseases will take place Monday, March 2nd at the Hazleton Area Public Library at 6 p.m. Call the library at 570-454-2961 for reservations. Seating is limited. For more information on the support group, contact Cynthia Donlin at 570-956-0872. And here's what our media partner, the Standard Speaker, is working on for tomorrow's edition. The Speaker will have a story about the Hazleton Police. The preview they sent us said Hazleton Police are rearming. Find out what the story is all about in Wednesday's edition of the Standard Speaker. We still have a ton of information to dish out. After the break, we talk with two members of Hazleton Power about what they are up to for Second Friday in downtown Hazleton this week. And in sports, we stop by the NEPA Race Car Show to talk about the movie Talladega Nights and local racing. This is FYI News 13. Brought to you by SSPTV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. Care for Kids Time. We're located here in Brandon's Forever Home, right on Church Street in the city of Hazleton. Today we're going to touch base with David Madera. He's actually one of my guests on Community NEPA, which uh, got a lot of feedback from what you're saying to this community in regards to foster and adoption. So we want people out there who maybe have a misconception of foster and adoption, or maybe they're out there and they're thinking, I might, they're teetering on, should I adopt, should I foster? You can provide a wealth of information for oh, them. Absolutely, absolutely we can. I'm hoping uh, we'll be part of the Brandon's Forever Home, and I think one of the things we'll talk about today is like a support group type of thing um, for families that are interested or thinking about doing foster care and, and adoption. And I just can't tell you how, it, it's you know, super exciting. It, uh, you know, obviously you're doing something wonderful. We enjoy it. You know, honestly, we feel greedy because we do this sometimes, you know, it's it, just because it's, but it's there for the kids. We're doing it for them. And it's, it's really fantastic. So talk about your story, your wife, uh, and you have adopted how many children and their ages and the process. Uh, currently we actually have five children in our home. Four of them we have adopted. Uh, Lori actually did our uh, last adoption was very recently for two children. Um, and we do currently have one child that we are fostering right now too. So um, hopefully we'll be adopting her very shortly. Yeah, there are many parents out there who are struggling to have children of their own. Uh, it could be a very emotional uh, time on both the mother and the father. Um, so talk about what this has done for you, your lives, your family lives. Yeah. Um, well, this was certainly, you know, we looked into all of the, you know, the typical, uh, you know, doctor appointments mm -hmm. and all of the, the in vitro and all those things that everybody talks about. Um, and of course, there are other options you can adopt from, you know, foreign countries and mm -hmm. things like that. 
but it was one of those things where you just kind of look and there are, you know, over 100,000 kids just in our state alone that are looking for foster care and adoption. And it was, it just kind of progressed to that point. And we are really excited. We're really happy we went that route. Um, it's, it's just been, it's been fantastic. It's been great. Your message to anyone out there thinking about going through this process? Just do it. <laughs> just do it. Um, you know, I, I think at this point there are there is a ton of support, um, and, and certainly something like Brandon's Forever Home. It's it's fantastic. I mean, this is going to be not just for the kids, but the families and the people that are thinking about it. Very simple. Just do it. It's very simple. And going back to your comment earlier, speaking on behalf of myself as a board member, you shouldn't hope to be a part of this. You are a major part of Brandon's Forever Home. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I continue, I plan to continue to be. Well, thank so. you to you and your wife for all you've done for Brandon's Forever Home and through the community, through this foster and adoption uh, process. Beautiful children. I've met all of them, and they are just beautiful to have around. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for everything you've been doing, by the way. Thank you. So, yep. All right. Join us every week here for Care for Kids on FYI. Time now for FYI News 13 weather. This is what life looked like on Broad Street in Hazleton this morning. FYI, Tim Novotny and myself, we scraped off the SSP TV Jeep today. It almost took us 10 minutes as a team. You could have gone ice fishing on the windshield. A little ridiculous. And it's not going to heat up anytime soon. Let's take a look at the forecast from the National Weather Service. Tonight, partly cloudy, low around 11. As we take a look at the extended forecast, Wednesday will be partly sunny. We'll only get up to 27 degrees. Wednesday night, there's a chance of snow showers after 11 p.m. Cloudy with low around 19. New snow accumulation of less than a half inch is possible. Thursday, snow showers likely high of 29. And again, an accumulation of around an inch is possible on Thursday. Thursday night, a chance of snow showers will get down to negative 2 degrees. Friday, the sun comes back out, but we're only getting up to 11 for the high. Friday night, back down to negative 2 once again. At least we'll be used to it. Saturday, a chance of snow showers, mostly cloudy, high of 19. And then Saturday night, cold and below zero again, negative 1 for the low. Tonight's weather is brought to you in part by the Ramada on Church Street in Hazleton. Monthly rooms are available with free Wi-Fi and a continental breakfast. Banquet space is available for any type of gathering, including weddings, meetings, reunions, Sweet 16 parties, and more. Call 570-455-2061. This Friday is second Friday in downtown Hazleton, and Hazleton Power is definitely going to heat things up for this big holiday weekend and for the special event taking place in the downtown. Here to talk all about it is Jocelyn Rizzo, who is the director of Power, and Annie Vinatieri, who is the assistant director and a board member. Annie, I'm going to start with you. Anyone out there, they know the name Power. Maybe they're not familiar with exactly what Power is. So tell us what Power stands for and what it's all about. Sure. Well, Hazleton Power um, is a more recent organization. We've only been around a few years, uh, but we've already accomplished a lot in those few years. And we're uh, professionals organized and working to enrich the region. And we focus primarily in the greater Hazleton area, so the valley, Hazleton, surrounding uh, locations. And um, we, ha we gear our membership towards uh, younger professionals, but... That could be young at heart as well. Um, and we really try and do a lot in terms of community outreach, uh, professional networking mixers, um, charitable events, uh, a real variety of things in order to help uh, make our professionals more well-rounded and well-versed with the things in this area and to professionally uh, better their, themselves as well. All righty. Well, Power is a planning partner, is what they said, with the Greater Hazleton Chamber of Commerce and Downtown Hazleton Alliance for Progress, working with the Second Friday events. Jocelyn, you're new at the helm, and you <laughs> said there's a lot going on this Friday with the Second Friday celebration. Yeah, absolutely. We have so much going on for Second Fridays for February. Um, as I'm sure you guys have seen, uh, with I know there are some people with DHAP in the chamber on as well. But um, us particularly, we're going to be at the Pines. We're going to have a um, free mixer kind of meet and greet type thing. We're going to be upstairs on the second floor in the mezzanine. If you're in the area, feel free to stop in, say hello, meet me, meet Annie, meet the rest of our board. Um, you know, give us any thoughts or any ideas that you would like to see us get involved with in the next couple of years. 
And you're also having a special that day if oh, yeah. people want to join. <laughs> yeah, yes, we are. Um, our membership discount for that night, if you're there and would like to sign up to be a member, is going to be $13 in honor of Friday the 13th. It's not always a bad thing. Um, so yeah, if you come down and you're thinking about joining, this is the best time to do it. Um, one of the things with our membership that we are really going to be pushing now is that if you are a member, uh, our mixers are going to be free for you. If you're not a member, they're going to be um, $10. So considering you'll get your membership for $13, it's kind of a win-win. Annie, final words for anybody out there who's unsure, what does it take if I want to be a member of power? What do you expect out of me? We want to uh, improve our community and we want to do that through an untapped source, which is our professionals and um, young people in the area. So we're, we're seeking to do that. So membership has that value. It's personal and professional betterment for that person. Um, and it's interaction in the community. And if somebody misses the mixer on Friday, how do they get in touch with you guys? Um, they can follow us on Facebook. We have a Facebook page. We have a LinkedIn page. Um, we have, I'll let Jocelyn give the, <laughs> the, uh, the updated um, website information real quick. Sure, yeah. Um, our website is hazeltonpower.com. Um, our email address is info at hazeltonpower.com. And you can find any of our information on there. All right, so very valuable information from Power. Come out and see these ladies and all the members of Power 5 to 7 p.m. for free at a free mixer at the Pines on Friday as part of Second Friday or give them a call to get involved. It's always good hearing from you, Lisa. Let's go to the green screen before we take our latest break. Pick two on your midday winning lottery number, zero two. Pick three, three five three. Pick four, eight eight nine zero. Pick five, zero seven five eight zero. Sports is next. We go to the NEPA race car show. This is FYI News 13 Sports get to the NEPA race car show at the Laurel Mall as fast as you can because if you ain't first, you're last. In the immortal words of Ricky Bobby from the movie Talladega Nights, chances are when you go this week, you'll bump into some drivers like I did and I had a ball. This is Tony Hilliard, a race car driver from Hazleton. This is also Tony Hilliard, a race car driver from Hazleton. And yes, he was doing the hand thing from Talladega Nights. We'll get to that. But first, let's explain this cardboard cutout of Hilliard. His friend and teammate Scott Adams owns a graphic design business called Himmer Graphics, and Adams made the cutout and presented it to Hilliard at a surprise birthday party. Now back to Talladega Nights. I mean, it's, it's just more like the funny side of everything. You know, it was a good movie. Um, you know, you got your other ones like Days of Thunder and everything. There's more of a serious side to it. But the Talladega Nights thing, you know, with the hands and stuff, you know, you just you can't beat that. It's it's a fun time. So, I mean, it's not all about business and, you know, racing. So, it's, I mean, the biggest thing is that we have good friends and, and good people around us. So Hilliard met Adams when he was looking for someone to letter his first car. Soon after that, the Himmer Graphics team was formed. Did you expect to have a racing team? I mean, uh, No, not really. You know, we actually started... Uh, I raced modifieds for a year, few years, uh, went back to doing some four cylinders just for fun. It was a little more economical and uh, kind of got hooked up with these guys. I had some extra cars and we just kind of all jumped in them. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you, you go to the racetrack and you, you form some good friendships and have fun. When asked why people should come and watch local racing, one of the first words out of Adam's mouth was fun. But that's not all he had to say. You know, it's, you know, local racing is, it's just fun, you know, there's, uh, a lot of the, you watch NASCAR, there's just a lot of corporate stuff going on, stuff can't be said. Uh, local racing, you get to see uh, a little more grassroots, you know, fighting and yelling and everything else. Not that I encourage it. There's some serious racing going on at tracks around our area, mixed with the fun. Hilliard will perfectly illustrate that fact while explaining his nickname that's printed on his tuxedo t-shirt. All right, tell me a little bit about you, man. You came, you dressed up for the occasion here. Yeah, I mean, the, and this is official. I mean, it actually has the the shirt on there or the name on there and graphics. Yeah, I mean, we got the the Himmer graphics and the and the Hitman. That's the the track nickname we got for me. So, um, and it's a tuxedo T-shirt. You know, I like to be formal, but I also like to party. You know, so I mean, that's how that one goes. Um, How'd you get the nickname? Um, I don't know if we really want to discuss that one on camera. I mean, you can almost kind of tell the Hitman series. Uh, there are some some videos out there of, of how, it, how it goes together. And what track were you talking about when you said at the track? Um, it was, no, we raced um, predominantly two years ago at uh, um, Mountain Speedway up in okay. Drums. Yeah. So that was our home track. We had, uh, there was a couple teammates of us and 
I stuck up for everybody, so on and off the track, so I became the hitman. The Ward family is also tossed around a lot when talking about local racing. Like any family, they have their disagreements, but they stick together. To keep the family going, there's a new generation coming up, and it includes Adam's son and this young man, 11-year-old Jacob Balliot. Why did you get started? How did you get started? I grew up watching my godfather race modifieds, and it looked fun. Who's your godfather? Donnie Wagner. Okay, and where did you see him race at? Mahoning Valley Speedway. All right, so did you go to your parents and say, I want to do this? How did that get started? Um, we went to a quarter midget track to see if I wanted to race quarter midgets, and I borrowed a friend's car, and he let me go out on the track with it and race it, and I liked it. What would you like about it? Why do you like it so much? You're going fast. <laughs> How fast do you go? In my fastest car right now, I go about 40 mile an hour. What was it like when you first did it? Was it scary? Was it fun? Was it ever scary? Mm, sometimes when I got in, like, for example, my World Formula, when the first time I got in that, I didn't know what to expect. It's the probably the most powerful quarter midget motor. They also run them in micro stocks. And so how'd you get used to it? It. Seat time. All of the drivers you just met had a parent involved in racing. It's a sport all about people, family and friends. So it's ironic that many of the cars these drivers spend so much time in don't even have passenger seats. The NEPA race car show continues through Sunday at the Laurel Mall in Hazleton. We'll have more from the show later this week on FYI. And remember, this Friday is Racers Night Out at Lobitz Catering Hall in Hazel Township. Fans and drivers are invited. You can go there. It's $10 at the door this Friday night, February 13th. We'll be right back. Happy Wing Night. It's Wing Night at Bottlenecks. Get $2 off your order of wings or all-you-can-eat wings and boneless wings for only $14.95. Bottlenecks wings are voted best wings in the area year after year. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. First tonight, the Greater Hazleton Chamber of Commerce is offering a seminar entitled Critical IT Security Protections Every Business Must Have in Place Now. Seminar is presented by Inatech Computer Consulting Incorporated and will be held Tuesday, February 17th from 8.30 to 10 a.m. at the Chamber offices. For more information, just call 570-455-1509. And finally, the Tamako Community Arts Center will be holding a music event called Free Range Folk with guest Gene Morrison on Saturday, February 14th. For more information about this, just call 570-668-1192. That's tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Gerald J. Gottstein of Nuremberg, Memorial Mass is Thursday at 10.30 a.m. in the Sacred Heart Roman Catholic Church. Friends may call Thursday beginning at 9.30. The Harmon Funeral Home is assisting the family. Lynn J. Jones, formerly of Hazleton, services Wednesday at 8 p.m. in the Connell Funeral Home. Friends may call Wednesday from 6 to 8 p.m. George A. Woodring, formerly of Drums, services will be announced by the McHugh Wilczek Funeral Home. Louis N. Pajovich, formerly of West Hazleton, services Wednesday at 10 a.m. in the St. Michael's Orthodox Church. Friends may call from 9.30 to 10 a.m. The Hazel Chapel of the Cropton Hughes Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Monica B. Teprovich of Quake Ake, funeral is Saturday at 10 a.m. in the Damiano Funeral Home. Friends may call Friday from 6 to 9 p.m. Francis A. Zancoli of Lansdale, funeral mass is Saturday at 10 a.m. in St. Mary Goretti Church. Friends may call Saturday from 9 to 10 a.m. Arrangements are by the Huff and Lacture Funeral Home. And Lita M. Zanolini, formerly of Cybertsville. Services were held today from the Harmon Funeral Home. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Take it easy, everyone.